we have to go right now to the keynote speech by uh, Maria Sunta Gianetti from uh, Stockholm School of Economics. I think you can use uh, 40, 45 minutes. That would bring us to the close of the session, but still allowing uh, for a couple of questions uh, from the floor. So please go ahead. It's fine? Okay. So I will um, change a bit the uh, topic now. We have been talking a lot about uh, climate risk and the way in which uh, climate risk affects financial stability. But uh, when we talk about um, climate change, uh, the, I think that is an even more important challenge uh, how the economy will uh, transit uh, to lower emission. And in this context in financial markets, uh, information and disclosures have a lot of uh, have a, a great role why well as a financial economist besides the regulation and carbon taxes we would want that uh, also the preferences of market participants are uh, reflected on uh, the projects and the company that get the funding and uh, European investors uh, are uh, widely believed uh, to prefer uh, a green and sustainable economy. But uh, in order to invest, uh, they need information. And here come the disclosure. And uh, there is a lot of information that is uh, provided to investors. Companies are uh, providing uh, uh, sustainability reports. Uh, they discuss uh, the sustainability policies uh, in uh, their investor reports, and so are banks. And there are also many credit rating agencies, one is uh, rep risk, that uh, provide the information about how sustainable the policies of different corporations or different banks should be. There is a challenge here, however that, uh, well, it is uh, widely debated how, uh, how informative all this information that is being disclosed is. And indeed, uh, it's not by coincidence that uh, there is a huge policy debate on uh, both sides of the Atlantic. So the European Central Bank came out with different reports about uh, how uh, banks' uh, disclosures about environmental policies uh, should be enforced and regulated. And uh, this is uh, a big issue also on uh, uh, the other side of the Atlantic, where Okay, now this is a big issue also on the other side of the, the Atlantic, where, f for instance, the SEC is um, requesting opinions from market participants about whether listed companies' disclosures should be regulated and uh, um, audited. Okay, so this is uh, a big issue, and, uh, but uh, we don't know about uh, how much we can get in uh, the current states in which uh, the um, corporations and bank disclosures are largely voluntary um, and uh, they are not regulated. The information that uh, firms and banks provide is uh, to some extent cherry picking. So this is uh, the broad theme of my talk, and uh, I will uh, base uh, my talk on uh, a paper that uh, you see here. The paper is uh, joint work also with Caterina Mendicino, who sits here, uh, there, and uh, Marie, uh, Martina Yasova, Barnard College, and uh, Maria Lumioti, who is a professor of accounting at University of Texas, Dallas. Since the paper will be is with Caterina, an economist at the ECB, and uh, we use uh, data from uh, an accredit, that is uh, data from the ECB, the usual disclaimer applies. So what we want to do here is uh, um, to understand that to what extent banks are doing what they say. Now, banks uh, play an important role uh, in uh, everywhere, and the euro area in particular, in uh, funding investment. And uh, since uh, the European Commission, the European Central Bank, stress that they could uh, play an important role uh, also in the transition to a more climate sustainable economy, is uh, important for us to understand how our banks uh, sort of uh, 
complying with this task. In words, banks are enthusiastic. I will show you evidence that the banks have, uh, are making extensive environmental disclosure in their reports. Basically, they discuss how they are changing their lending policy to contribute to fewer emissions. Of course, what we don't know is, uh, we don't know how they are lending, how these lending policies are uh, reflected in their portfolio. And uh, this is uh, precisely what uh, we ask in this paper. Basically, what we are asking is, uh, what is uh, the relationship between the bank's environmental disclosures and uh, their lending standards? So we start from uh, um, the large banks in the euro area, we look at all their environmental disclosures in uh, annual investor reports and sustainability reports. And then we uh, look at who is getting funding from these banks. Now, a huge challenge that uh, perhaps we didn't uh, discuss uh, enough during these few days is that it is uh, extremely hard to uh, be able to measure which borrowers are uh, brown, green, how much they are emitting. Why? Well, because um, companies produce this information and sell information about emission only for the largest borrowers. And also banks have access to this information for the largest borrowers. But the banks in the European Union are facing the challenge to measure their carbon emission in their portfolios. So what are they doing? My understanding is that most of banks are looking at industry level emission. And this is precisely what we will do in a large part of our test. The European Commission provides information about emission by to the EJT industry and we will relate emissions to the industry value added in order to rank brown and green industries. However, before you were talking about the transition, so it could be that a bank is getting more exposed to brown industries, but is at the same time funding the transition of these industries. So we want that the banks and investors in general get engaged, so we could be picking this. I will show, uh, so how do we do that? Well, fortunately for us, for um, a majority of firms in the European Union, there exists a business description in English. So we do a textual analysis of the business descriptions of the borrowers that, uh, for which we can gather this information based on the EU taxonomy of uh, green uh, industries. And then we use also this information in order to check which firms are getting relatively more funding by companies that are bossing more about their environmental sustainability of their policies and the changing that they are enacting. So this is um, the plan ahead. Let me uh, give you some insight on what uh, we expect, what we expect when companies disclose. Well, in principle, if the information provided by company could have a negative effect on the company reputation because this information is verifiable, we would expect that, well, company disclose the truth. So, com uh, and in particular, we would expect that the banks that are stressing more their environmental policies are precisely those that are either changing most of the composition of their portfolio towards green industries or funding to a larger extent the transition. But I said that before, the, the huge um, issue about uh, information about the sustainability of banks and corporation policies in general is that we don't know how reliable this information is. 
And uh, most of the reason is that uh, it is very hard to verify this information. So there is a uh, lot of room for uh, what I'm calling uh, greenwashing. And here uh, I am offering a definition of greenwashing that uh, accountant uh, use uh, and is uh, relatively broad. It's actually used also in some uh, ECB report. So what the uh, definition of greenwashing we have in mind? Well, we have in mind that the greenwashing of a bank that uh, might, have, might be stressing in its report that is decreasing the exposure to a particular brown high emission sector, for instance, oil and gas, but that in other not visible part of their portfolio, because the loan portfolio of a bank is not visible, is actually behaving as before or funding relatively more brown borrowers. So what are our main funding? Let, uh, I will carry you through uh, some of uh, the actual results, but I would like to give you before an overview of uh, our empirical analysis because we have a lot of results. So we start from the analysis of the environmental disclosures of these banks. So we, um, we download all this information and we perform a textual analysis on the basis of a dictionary that we construct mostly uh, based um, uh, on uh, um, the materiality of, uh, um, of sustainability uh, policies. And uh, our dictionary aims to capture what banks say that uh, how they are contributing to the environment, biodiversity, as exposed to scenario related to risk. We validate this information. So we show that, for instance, banks in countries in which there is most social activism for, for the environment are disclosing relatively more, and that this information that we collect is related to proxy for the bank's reputation about being environmentally conscious. How do we measure this? Well, we have what rating agency have uh, been doing. So we show that uh, our measure for environmental uh, disclosure is actually positively correlated with all our uh, ESG ratings that uh, we could find. And also, banks that uh, portray themselves as more environmentally conscious in their highly visible activity appear to have a greener policy. So for instance, uh, we show that uh, these banks are more involved in underwriting on green bonds. And this is uh, also a sign of caution when we use uh, the syndicated loan markets. Uh, loans that are syndicated are a bit like bonds. They are uh, highly visible. What we do is different. We look at the lending of the portfolio of a bank that is opaque without the fantastic data of the European Central Bank. There is no way that we could have written this paper. So what do we find when we do this? Well, we find that banks that portray themselves as environmentally and socially conscious issue relatively more loans to borrowers in uh, br uh, brown industries, so that is high emission borrowers. And this is uh, the case according to all our measures. I'm sure that some of you might be fine, uh, thinking, okay, but those are the companies that need the capital in order to transit to greener technology. Unfortunately, this is uh, not what uh, we find. We find actually that the brown borrowers that get the loans from these banks are investing less, they are not doing much R&D, and these are the technologies that generally are fought to favor transition. Instead, these are borrowers that are relatively lower productivity in their industry. They are relatively lower profitability. So basically what we conclude on the basis of this analysis is that uh, it appears that these banks are uh, greenwashing and there are characteristics of the bank's business model that is uh, 
close relationship with the borrowers that limit the extent to which these banks can favor the transition. So going back to what Martin was saying before, perhaps at least for, uh, for what bank funding is concerned, we need other type of regulation that directly affect the externality. So let me get to uh, the data. We have been uh, seeing uh, an accredit a lot, so this is uh, what we use uh, here as well. And uh, we focus on 553 banks, but uh, the banks uh, includes uh, the subsidiary of the bigger uh, um, funding group. And as I mentioned before, we will have in the papers uh, three different ways of identifying brown and green borrower. The first one, based on two-digit industries, is the one that is more comprehensive because we can classify all the borrowers in an credit depending on the two-digit emission in their country of origin. But then, of course, we are aware that there is a lot of heterogeneity within industries. So for this reason, we use scope one and scope two emission, and we chose to use Urgentum, that probably has the best coverage. And also, we just added to the paper um, the analysis of the firm's business descriptions. That is, this allows us to highlight whether the bank is actually lending to the photovoltaic uh, subsidiary of Shell. So, and then we have other data that are a little less interesting. So we download all of these uh, disclosures and we perform uh, um, textual analysis after having created our dictionary. And uh, again, our dictionary is mostly based on the sustainability accounting standards uh, board uh, um, classification, but uh, it also, we look at the bank reports, we make sure to exclude uh, words that are related to risk scenarios and so on. And again, the important words are uh, related there is, uh, uh, renewables, oil, natural gas, uh, CO2, biodiversity. And I want to stress the characteristics of this report. While in the US uh, um, listed companies are requested to disclose the risk, to my knowledge, in the European Union, this bank, at the date of our analysis, were not. So all the reports we read, and uh, Maria basically read them all, have this uh, positive slant, meaning that, uh, yes, there are banks that uh, discuss uh, oil and gas, but they are portraying what uh, they are doing good to move away from that. And indeed, so our measure for environmental disclosure, for which I will show you all the results, is based on quantity relative to the length of the reports, but uh, I could use uh, a measure based on the sentiment of the disclosures, and uh, I would find all my results for all the positive sentiment, meaning that the banks are not saying in this investor report, well, uh, if something, uh, if there will be flood, we will be bust, okay? So, and this is uh, the pattern of uh, uh, environmental uh, disclosure over time. And uh, what you see is that uh, they have increasing, uh, uh, been increasing a lot of average. And this means that the banks, uh, the, each single bank disclose more, but uh, there are also relatively more banks uh, that are disclosing. So are we capturing just noise? So I argue, we, uh, look, we do a validation analysis to provide evidence that uh, no, our textual analysis is not just capturing noise. So what you observe first is that uh, in countries in which there is uh, more attention to the environment, uh, there are uh, banks uh, disclose relatively more. And this makes sense because banks uh, disclose in order to attract investors and customers, the depositors. 
okay? And uh, um, this is what brings them to portray a reputation for environmental sustainability. We also find that uh, the disclosures that we classify textually are uh, higher for uh, companies that uh, um, committed to follow the GRI standard for uh, their environmental disclosure. This is uh, basically a voluntary commitment. The GRI is a website. They give you a questionnaire, and the, uh, banks or companies would be uh, supposed to disclose a, uh, according to this que uh, questionnaire. But actually, even if you look at the GRI data, this is not the case. Uh, some banks uh, provide more uh, quantitative information, other more qualitative. And then, as I was mentioning before, uh, these environmental disclosures uh, are uh, very highly correlated with uh, the actual uh, reputation of uh, the bank that is uh, captured by the ESG rating. And uh, banks uh, that uh, portray, uh, um, try to portray, uh, uh, um, construct a reputation for environmental consciousness. Also in their visible activity, here we are measuring the visible activity looking at uh, uh, green bond underwriting, are, uh, this is again uh, correlated. So basically our contribution here is looking at non-visible activities, that is, what do they do when banks lend? So if you want to remember only one slide of my presentation, I uh, this is the slide you should remember. It's, it's not our actual analysis, but we look at the portfolio in the past of banks that are disclosing more. So what you see here is that the banks that disclose more tend to have a larger portfolio exposure to brown industries in the past. This is not surprising because we know from very different fields that um, any corporations disclose more if uh, it thinks has to address a problem. So for instance, it has been shown in several papers that uh, companies with higher gender gaps disclose more about the diversity, okay? So this is very similar, okay? But uh, this is fine because uh, the um, specialization of a bank depend uh, on uh, the industry, the real activity in uh, the main countries of operation, okay? What we look at in our empirical analysis is whether besides the disclosing, these banks are also trying to do something to move away from their past specialization to something that we classify as more sustainable. So how do we do that? Well, in the previous figure, I was looking at the past loan exposure in the past of the bank. Now we look at the new loan issuance. And basically, we look at whether banks that on the basis of our textual analysis we classify as high environmental reporters lend relatively more to borrowers that we classify as brown. Of course, this depends on the different demand that these banks face. So how do we do it? For, uh, do we address that? Well, we have uh, two methodologies that are uh, widely accepted to control for the demand of borrowers in different industries. First, we look at how different banks extend new loans to the same borrower during a year and that this is, this is the usual Kwajamian uh, methodology. But uh, some of these borrowers are small, so some of what uh, we do is uh, based on a more generalized version of the Kwajamian methodology, that is, uh, we look at how um, banks lend to borrowers that are being in a similar cluster are are likely to have similar demand for credit. So these are a borrower in the same 
industry, country, and year. So I will show you results with uh, both uh, methodology. So what do we find? Well, we find that the banks that we classify as reporting more about their environmental uh, policies lend relatively more to borrowers in brown industry. And uh, this result is robust to using different uh, proxy for unobserved heterogeneity. Now we know that the bank business model is such that they cannot cut the relationship. So, but perhaps these banks could try to engage relatively more borrowers in green industry. Perhaps that's what their, their environmental disclosures are hinting to. But we find no evidence on that. So the results are very similar when we look at borrower level emission that is uh, um, scope one and scope two emissions that uh, are widely considered to be the best uh, indicator for uh, accompanied brownness. So why is so? So let's look at the channels. And of course, uh, the first intuitive channel is uh, that these uh, banks uh, are funding some brown firms that are investing in decreasing their emission and transitioning to a more sustainable economy. Now, as you know, an accredit has not a very long time series. So how to do that? It's very hard to look at whether the borrowers that are getting loans are decreasing their emission in the future. We could do that, but I wouldn't consider these a very stringent test not to find anything. So what do we look at? Well, that we try to uh, glean what the borrowers are doing with the money. And there is a very simple test that we can do for everyone because we have access to Orbis that basically provides us a financial statement for the population of European borrowers. So if the borrowers are investing in transition, we should observe that these borrowers are doing some R&D because many others, for instance, Philippe Guillon, have told us, well, that the borrowers that invest more in green technology tend to file for more green patents. But then we should observe that the borrowers that get loans and they are in brown industries are investing in R&D. Or at the very least, they should buy new machines that are greener. So they should invest more in uh, um, uh, fixed assets. So we also look at whether firms lend more to brown borrowers that have committed to decrease their emission in the future. And for this, we use borrowers that are signatories of the science-based targets initiative. Of course, this is a smaller sample of borrowers, so we will adapt a bit our econometric methodology. But what you see here is that if anything, these banks that discuss more of the environment in their reports are lending to a lower extent to borrowers that do high R&D. And there is no evidence that they lend to borrowers that invest a lot in fixed assets or that have signed the science-based targets initiative. So what and uh, we have uh, basically the same result if we classify green and brown borrowers using uh, uh, company-specific characteristics based on the textual analysis of business description. That is, we will do textual analysis of the business description based on the EU taxonomy. And what you see is that at least when we control for demand using the cluster, it is again brown borrowers that are getting relatively more credit from um, 
come uh, from banks that they disclose a lot about the environment. So then we try to get more around the question of why we observe this. And of course, the relationships are important. So the first step that we ask is that to ask uh, to what extent the past is encumbering these banks, leading them to tell something differently from what they are doing. For doing so, we look at new relationship. And uh, what you observe here is that, uh, well, when banks are establishing a relationship with the new borrowers, they are indeed doing what they say. That is, they are less likely to establish a new relationship with borrowers in brown industries. The problem is that when they have an existing relationship with a borrower in a brown industries, they don't cut this relationship. And for this reason, if we aggregate at the bank industry year level, we do find that the banks that have high, that have a high environmental disclosures each year extend more new loans to borrowers in brown industry. A results that you can see here. Okay. So why are these relationships uh, uh, so important? Can it be that, uh, well, it's very hard to, inter uh, to terminate uh, some relationship? So we look at uh, the quality of uh, the borrowers. And uh, specifically, what we do is uh, we try to identify firms that are less likely to be financially healthy. So these are firms with relatively low productivity, low profitability, low interest rate coverage. And what you observe here is that if anything, these are the borrowers in brown industries that are receiving relatively more loans. So we do some other things in the paper. For instance, I am not showing the slides, but I would like to highlight that of course, banks may not penalize their borrowers in terms of quantity because, of course, they don't want the borrower to fail, okay? But they could penalize them in terms of risk premium. However, we do not find that these banks that are high environmental reporters charge a higher loan cost to these borrowers. Another aspect of the loan contract that we can look with an credit is uh, the loan maturity, okay? And uh, an idea would be, well, if the bank is trying to engage with the borrower and monitoring a lot, well, probably this bank would shorten the maturity because uh, the renewal of the loan is what gives a bargaining power to the bank. We don't find that. If anything, a borrower in brown industry are getting longer maturity loans from these high environmental reporters bank. So we also find that this behavior is mostly uh, enacted by banks that have relatively low capitalization. It's not so sur surprising that they are more dependent on uh, capital markets. And also, large banks do this more. Again, and not surprising, large banks are more likely to be listed, they are more visible, they are more subject to investor pressure. Then we try to look at the effects over time. If we look at the, uh, after Paris Agreement, we find nothing, but I wanted to leave you with these graphs, okay? So you might be wondering, well, uh, you, um, you start uh, early on, and uh, some of you might be wondering why the, the, the all your slides uh, say 2014. Well, we look at the uh, loan issuance. So even if uh, uh, an accredit starts in 2018, we can construct our data set of new loan issuance. But it doesn't really, really matter. Our results are equally robust if uh, we start uh, in uh, uh, 2018. But what you observe here is that uh, 
this behavior that we highlight uh, is mostly driven by the last three years of the sample. That is when the environmental pressure has uh, increased. So we are not uh, talking about history or about a problem that uh, has disappeared. So um, I am actually uh, done, so let uh, uh, me try to wrap up. What do we do in this paper? Well, we look at uh, the information that the banks uh, give about uh, their environmental and social policies. This is important. Why? Well, uh, there is a chance that uh, we, as investors, as customers, we can convey our preferences uh, to active market participant and affect investment. Okay, so for instance, there is mixed evidence, but some institutional investors might be able to affect the companies precisely because they of their preferences. Okay, is, is this the case for banks? Well, it looks like that the banks, some banks are trying to construct a reputation for being environmentally conscious, okay? But uh, this reputation is reflected in visible market activity, like uh, underwriting of green bonds. Okay, anyone can check that on uh, Bloomberg's banks, the website, and so on. But uh, the way we, uh, we don't see this information in uh, the most important part of the business of the bank, which is well, is lending. Okay, most of the portfolio of a bank is lending to small firms. So in this respect, discussion and attempt to make, to regulate environmental disclosure about what banks and company can say have to be supported if we think that this instrument, if we think that information is relevant. And this is what I wanted to share with you today. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Very impressive work, especially on the data front and I credit Orbis textual analysis. And also very interesting, uh, to say the least, paradox in the, in the conclusion. Congratulations also because you managed to catch up on our schedule more or less. So that's brilliant. Having said that, we have therefore uh, more room for questions, either in the chat or in the room. I see already gentlemen at the end, and then Tiana. Peter Raupach, Deutsche Bundesbank. Uh, <clears throat> I have a question on, on a special sector uh, where you po possibly could observe more precisely whether banks have changed their activity, which is power producers. So you know the energy mixes for basically all of them. Of course, these are, again, the more visible companies. So if, if the uh, banks try to sort of cheat, uh, they would be correct or would tend to be more correct there. But have you looked at that? And if so, what do you find? So we haven't looked at the power companies in particular. When we look at the business descriptions, uh, we try to go in that direction. But it could be a good idea to look at those companies in particular. And uh, it is true that I stress the visibility, OK? But uh, when we use Urgentum, we really are basing our test on uh, 1,000 uh, of the largest borrowers in uh, the euro area. Those are very visible, and uh, we still find the same result. So is, uh, perhaps we can talk a bit more about the data sources and what uh, we could use, because uh, I think it would be interesting. Thank you. Thank you. We had yeah. another question uh, here first. Whatever, I think. I think, I think you were performing. OK. So I just, uh, Michaela Markson, Societe Generale, I just had a quick question for you because it strikes me that the period over which you're doing the analysis, uh, 2014 to 2020, is probably quite a heterogeneous period itself. So I wonder if you observe different behaviors over the period. And I think it would be super interesting to see 
whether there are changes happening now, especially with the signing of the Net Zero Banking Alliance by many of the banks, in, uh, which is quite late, uh, in 21, and the objectives are now being set. So I wonder if you have any sense of, of a time factor in, in how the data may be changing or not. So this is what I was trying to convey with uh, the last figure I showed. So within our sample that finishes in 2020, we see that is uh, the last three years of the sample that uh, largely drive the result. We don't uh, focus on that uh, particular climate alliance. There have been many of these uh, initiatives. So the GRI is uh, one such, and uh, we don't find much there. But uh, of course, uh, you know, I can talk about my sample, and uh, it would be good if uh, also with more enforcement and with the ECB attempts to uh, regulate or at least morally convince banks that this behavior might be changing. But uh, I think that uh, this attempt of regulation is probably as important. Uh, Diana Mufim, Bank of Portugal and ECB. So it's a great paper, my Asunta. I, I wonder if you looked into banks lending to different types of companies, with the hypothesis being that when the banks lend to large companies on which there's a lot of public information, maybe syndicated loans on which it's, it's easier to collect information, maybe these banks are trying to look good. For these firms, they would lend to greener firms, but then for the private firms, which are the bulk of, of mm -hmm. the companies you have in Unicredit, then, well, that, then they could do whatever, and, and this would be consistent with the general results you have. Yeah. So. I don't have a sense of whether the loans in or what proportion of the loans to large borrowers in an accredit are syndicated. That, of course, would make them more visible. But I can tell you that on average, when we focus on large borrowers because we are using actual emission from Urgentum, we find largely the same results. Of course, when we look at the... Um, the cross-sectional effect, we could use also borrower size and then, yeah. Uh, Daniel Gluch, ECB SSM. On your very interesting finding that, uh, yes. uh, that uh, banks that do a lot of brown lending also do a lot of, or more than the average amount of green reporting, but also another finding which, which uh, comes from your research, they tend to invest into new uh, relationships that would be more green than average for the industry. Should we perhaps simply somehow see the greenwashing, the, the, the over-reporting of green activities as a sign of not the current policy, but of an intended policy transition of a bank, and in this way, maybe optimistically see it as a, as a positive sign. So I understand that the EBC cares about the average emission of the portfolio of a bank. We are being more generous here. We are looking at the average emission of new loans issued by a banks. Now, what we find on the extensive margin is that when we look at new borrowers in brown industries, those are the, those that no one wants, okay? And it's true, these banks are even less likely to establish a new relationship with these brown borrowers. Okay, so that is uh, positive and goes uh, towards uh, the direction of what uh, they are saying. But if we look at the uh, really green industry, you know, most of industries are in between. They are neither brown nor green. In green industries, those are the borrowers that uh, everyone wants. Also, probably they have also higher growth opportunities. So there we don't find many cross-sectional effects. So it is true on the extensive margin, if you look only a new relationship, they are saying what they say. They are doing what they say. But if we aggregate using the new loans of these banks, 
well, they are not doing what they say. So if the depositors are using this kind of advertising to choose their banks, they are being cheated. Strong conclusion, which would yes. uh, conclude our session. Yes. Uh, so thanks a lot to you and all of the speakers and discussants we had earlier.